what are some other ways that you know a generative AI uh, can support procurement? Not necessarily in the workflows or in the processes, but what are some other ways that generative AI can support uh, uh, procurement teams? And Maria, we'll start that out off with you. Well, you hit the nail on the head, Chris, when you talked about the possibilities, right? The possibilities of not having to churn through all of that data and then have more collaborative conversations like Ben said, right? So it's like, it, it, I, maybe if you're not old enough, but if you remember when the internet first came out, right? We had so much information at our fingertips that we could just type and go, what is the uh, answer to this question, right? Now imagine that this is this is the internet times a million. This is having your own personal assistant within procurement available to give you answers to the questions you have about what's possible. So to me, it's about the possibility. And so once I know that I've got this support, this almost like de facto team of procurement at my fingertips, I'm able to then say, well, let me give you some scenarios. What if my CE CAO says, this or what if my CFO says that and they want to see so and so could you scour the internet scour the data points utilize the existing data points. I mean, you can upload information data you can upload workflows you can upload um, papers and then say based on this information what are the outputs what can you do for us and I think that's nice. it that is the having having your own personal team in your pocket basically Totally, totally. Like having and, and somebody dropped in the comments and I love this comment. And, and, and then I want to get to you on the same question be, before we jump into it. it. You know, they say it's like having your own like personal intern or personal assistant. Right. That's a thousand percent facts. Like if I could do an emoji right here, it'll be like a fire emoji because that is one thousand percent. Right. Like whether you're in procurement, supply chain, finance, like having that ability to go like, and I always, I always talk about AI, right? It's like the smartest, dumbest friend I always wanted, right? It's like that person that when Jeopardy comes on, you're like, yeah, buddy, we're about to win, right? But that's how you can leverage it. And to it, Maria, directly to your point, like you can leverage that piece of it to, to put you in the right activity, to get that collaboration, which are really those high skills. Ben, I want you to weigh in on this one. Well, I think the first thing we have to realize is it's not just about generative AI. When I said it's also a people story, now let me talk about the other technologies that are involved because we have to think about which processes, which workflows will have positive ROI. And if you don't see the entire big picture of technology behind generative AI, you can make some pretty bad decisions here. There are multiple cloud we need cloud to make data accessible and to build as well as making models accessible by everyone, not just one organization in a silo, but by everyone. We need digital apps behind generative AI. If we don't have that, a generative interface, as useful as ChatGPT feels, there's more behind it. If you have a, a you know, really a lot of apps, a lot of productivity tools. So we need more behind a generative interface to take advantage of the technology's sort of orchestration power. And we need high quality data. We need that business or customer context, which is really that, that domain knowledge that we're pulling out of all of these data generating sources, or there's nothing worth accessing. You know, if, this, if the data is bad, there's nothing to access. We also need more than just one type. I mean, generative AI is not the AI. There's a whole bunch of data science and machine learning approaches that, and we don't see this a lot, that sit behind a generative interface or that collaborate with generative interfaces in order to deliver value. So you have descriptive modeling, predictive, prescriptive. Those deliver significant value to specific processes and workflows. So what you really need to do is focus on those processes and workflows where again, back to managing complexity, reducing uncertainty, but where doing that will have the highest possible value because again, there's a lot of technology behind generative AI. It's not as simple as chat GPT. There's a lot of value there, but that's just the tip of the iceberg and what's under the surface. It's on the one hand, it does cost a bit, but on the other hand, it can support use cases and deliver functionality that have never been possible before. So we have to focus on the unique strengths of the technologies and focus it towards use cases, 
processes, workflows, where it creates significant value, not just for the business, but we also need to start looking at customers too and delivering customer value so we can improve revenues. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. I love that, man. Delivering value to drive impact, both bottom line impact and people impact. Christine, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, uh, I love what everyone have, has said. And I particularly enjoyed hearing you, Chris, talk about the market research, because that is something that can take a significant amount of time. And I think that when we're looking at implementing different use cases for generative AI, it really is about just taking a step back and looking at, you know, how long do each of these tasks take? Because we could go in a million different directions at this point, but literally sitting down and making a list and saying like, okay, if I optimize this, how much time am I really saving from a people perspective? Or, you know, does this make uh, processes more available to less technical people? And, you know, from that perspective, start to say, okay, I'm going to prioritize base these based on how much time am I saving people or how am I making access better to others? And I think that, you know, one of the things that's going to come to the top is market research is going to be a big saver. Um, things like supplier uh, selection, document generation, contract analysis. Um, but again, you know, there's just so many use cases and it's really going to be taking a step back and thinking about strategically what is going to have the most benefit to the business and where should we start?